Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. My partner, Malik Hill. And we have just finished the college football season. And we are ready for bowl games and playoffs. Teams are set. Heisman candidates are out. There's a lot going on in college football to wrap this season up. So we're going to focus on that a lot today. Um, There is a little NBA topic that I wanted to talk about. And then, of course, we got to get into picks. Because I need a lot of catching up to do at this point. Oh, okay. Let's let's put that in caps oh. and underline it. Right. And like, <laughs> you got to take some shots. We get it. It's a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. Luckily, there's there's a lot of uh, close games. I think this week, um, a lot of divisional games. So, I got a chance, but it's slim. So we got to start off with the big one. Michigan won the Big Ten title. They beat Iowa pretty handily. Seemed like they got off to a slow start. And then the well, they got half. off to a fast start, and then it went yeah, yeah, yeah. slow for the rest of the first half. Yeah, and then, then they just crushed them in the end. Uh, so Michigan got it done. They did what they were supposed to do. Uh, do you have any takeaways from this game besides just they just did what they needed to do? It was almost – it wasn't as surreal as the Ohio State win, but with about three minutes left and when it was clear that it was completely done – <clears throat> Honestly, the whole fourth quarter, it was almost clear. Mm-hmm. But I, I really needed to see the lead keep building. With about three minutes left, <clears throat> when J.J. came in to finish the game, and they took out the starters. I, honestly, I was watching the game at a friend's house with a group of friends, and I just started giggling and just laughing. <laughs> For like uh, like two minutes straight, I just started laughing, and I just started looking around the room, and I just, I just couldn't – I didn't know how to like react. Mm-hmm. I was just, it, it, it's something I've never seen them win a Big Ten championship. I've never seen them close a deal like this. Right. It was it, it was an incredible thing to see. And honestly, I I don't have many words. I mean, they came out with a great game plan. Mm-hmm. They hit on two big plays. Their first two drive well. Two of their their second and third drives, they hit big plays. Right. <clears throat> the defense was tough and didn't give up anything for the most part. Mm-hmm. They let them get in the red zone a few times, but it was clear Iowa just didn't have what it took to score on that defense. Right. Iowa has to make a, a ton of changes, honestly. It's almost more about them in this game to me than Michigan because how is their offense still stuck in 1995? <laughs> when <laughs> football well it's impressive that they can get to 10 wins in a conference championship playing that way yeah but the fact that you get all the way to this level go against a top team in Michigan and you still stick with that and that's all you have right that's not good and Kirk Ferentz and his son Brian who's the offensive coordinator they have a lot of decisions to make and mm-hmm. they might need to reevaluate that coaching staff because the defense is tough, like always for Iowa, but your offense can't be that stagnant and just that below average and pretty much bad. Like, run it up the middle, play action, run it up the middle, play action, take no shots. It, it, it was pretty much like the rinse and repeat mm-hmm. over and over again. You hit a few passes over the middle for extended yards, but that was about it. But yeah, on the Michigan side, Aiden Hutchinson had a nice sack. The run defense was stout. DJ Turner is slowly becoming one of the best corners in the Big Ten. It's all coming together at the right time. Yep. It honestly is. And they're going to need it. Yeah. They are going to need it coming up um, in just, I mean, it's just a few weeks away. Uh, So we won't get into a full preview of any of these bowl games just yet. 
but Michigan will find themselves playing on December 31st. Speaking of the college football playoff, those four teams have been announced. And because of the SEC championship game. Yeah, we got to talk a little bit about that. Because the Heisman winner Alabama is, he- is here. Beat Georgia. And they actually did it pretty handily. Yeah. They beat Georgia 41 to 24. And so Alabama finishes off with a huge win to finish their season 12 and 1. Georgia also finishing 12 and 1. And that also puts a damper a, a little bit, I guess, on what Michigan has to do now because now the order of playoff teams are Alabama 1, Michigan 2, Georgia 3, and Cincinnati 4. Congrats. Shout out to Cincinnati yeah. for yeah. Congrats to Cincinnati for making it. Uh they beat Houston in the American Conference. Uh, title game. Um, before we get into the SEC, real quick, I just want to highlight Pitt and Kenny Pickett winning the ACC championship. Malik's guy. Um, Listen, man. I don't worry. We'll get into him later. <laughs> okay. Uh, Baylor beating Oklahoma State in the Big Twelve championship was big by like an inch. Yes, they. Uh, Not diving out. and just missing the pylon. Yep, and Oklahoma State having had a chance to make it into the college football playoff. Um, oh, yeah, the <laughs> kind of funny, Utah beating Oregon in the Pac-12 championship. Oregon just fell apart at it's the end of the season. It, embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, get, getting blown out at Utah, mm-hmm. it's a tough environment. They're a tough team. I guess I can understand it. But when you start your season <laughs> off beating Ohio State early on, there was a lot of hope for that team, and they just fell flat. And the, the coach is gone now. <laughs> yeah. Um, Malik's Aztecs, San Diego State, lost to Utah State. Not Mountain football. West. <laughs> Especially a Brady, a Brady Hope coached uh, San Diego State Aztecs. That's, that's yeah. not what I'm rooting for. Anyway, so back to the SEC championship. Alabama and Bryce Young and those receivers – that's the first time all season that somebody's put up points against Georgia. And that's scary because now Alabama just gets to play Cincinnati in the round one and get prepared for that championship game. Now, am I hoping Cincinnati pulls off a miracle? Of course. I hate Alabama. But do I see that happening? No. Um, and now I don't know. What to, like It's hard to think of what Georgia is now because – For so long in this season, they looked untouchable. And Alabama, at many times, looked like they were faltering. Uh, So if Alabama all of a sudden has figured out how they want to play and what they're doing, I I don't know what to tell these other teams in the the playoff. Um, But yeah, they they got off ahead, and Georgia had to play catch-up, and that's in a similar fashion to, you know, like, even Michigan, I think that like that's not their style. Georgia likes to to pound it on you and make you work for everything, and they they're not a team that plays from behind very well, and they haven't had to do that all season. And now, like like you said, Bryce Young, and we'll get into that as well, looking like he might be the Heisman. What is your take from this game, and how do you feel going forward for the other college football playoff teams? Firstly, uh, the the Alabama nightmare for Kirby Smart is is just he has to be like have so many sleepless nights after this because mm-hmm. the fact that you dominate like that all season, I'm sure they went into that game with confidence. Yeah, and the teacher just schools him once again. Yeah, it's just it it has to just tear him up. Especially, they couldn't get pressure on Bryce Young, really. They they got to him a few times, but they can never really get to him. Mm-hmm. They can never get him down. Alabama didn't run the ball like crazy, but they had good runs. Jamison Williams was just burning the secondary. It's like... It's, it's hard to describe. It's, it's like Nick Saban is his kryptonite. Yeah. Because, like I said earlier, like... 
Alabama, they beat Florida by two. Uh, they lost to A and M. They barely beat LSU. <laughs> yeah, they beat LSU by six. They beat Arkansas by a touchdown. They beat Auburn by it took, two. T- it took several overtimes for them to beat Auburn. Yeah, and then the number one team in the nation at the time, they dismantled them. It's 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 almost hard to explain. I mean, it's kind of silly in retrospect that we uh kind of doubted Nick Saban <laughs> in a big game. It's kind of ridiculous when you think back. I'm just always hopeful, to be honest. But <laughs> almost everybody bet, well, it's going to be Georgia by at least a touchdown. They mm-hmm. could blow them out. Like, Yeah. Thinking Nick Saban wasn't going to show up for this, is it was just ridiculous. But because of Alabama's ups and downs, I think people haven't been paying full attention to them, honestly. Mm-hmm. This is one of those rare seasons where even though they've been pretty much like top six, top five all season – you look and you see they only beat LSU 20 to 14. You're like, what is that? Right. You look and they, it took four overtimes for them to beat Auburn. It's like, well, this must be a down year. Mm-hmm. But Bryce Young has been excellent. Jamison Williams and John Mechie have been excellent. Will Anderson, like you said, we'll get to the Heisman talk. Mm-hmm. Will Anderson deserves to be in New York, and he's been an absolute monster mm-hmm. all year. But they just haven't been able to put it together for one dominant performance yet. Yeah, And the fact that they were able to save it for a team that we all thought was the ultimate juggernaut of the college football world this year shows Alabama isn't going anywhere. And I, I bet that that just yeah that just makes you upset mm-hmm. on, on the inside. I just, it does. I just know it does. Yeah, it does. The dynasty, it, it just, yeah. it's here. It's uh, here to stay. Do you think that this helps Michigan, though, now? That... They're gonna go up against Georgia, who we just saw has a weakness. Yeah, I'm I'm happy you asked this question because it can go one of two ways. Georgia now sees that they're mortal. Mm-hmm. Stetson Bennett has had a very good season, but he might not even be better than Cade McNamara, if we're being honest. Mm-hmm. They have a very good run game, but they haven't been able to dominate in the run game like Michigan has. They have an all-time great overall defense in front seven, but they don't have the combo of Aiden Hutchinson and David Ojabo. Almost no team in the country has. That level of dominance on, on both ends, it's something they haven't seen. Georgia could, could attack this as we need to get our mojo back, and they could come in with a fire that we haven't seen all season mm-hmm. and just jump on Michigan. Or... Kirby could come in with the situation of we're still the same team. We don't need to switch up our game plan. Just stay running the ball, take occasional shots on offense, and just let the defense do what they do. Mm -hmm. Something in my mind thinks Kirby Smart thinks they're just going to continue to be the same team. And that Alabama game is just, uh, that's just a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to being what we are against Michigan. This Michigan team is different. This is the first Jim Harbaugh team that has finally lived up to the hype. Well, actually, there was no hype in the preseason, Mm -hmm. which is the craziest thing. They're a team that's gone above and beyond what any perception was. And that's why Kirby Smart shouldn't overlook them. I'm sure in all press conferences and all types of media, he's going to say Michigan has had a great year. Michigan is great, but we're Georgia. Our defense is fantastic. It's all going to come back to, but we're Georgia. I think he could overlook Michigan. Yeah. And I think it could be a defensive slugfest because it it showed in that game against Alabama, besides Brock Bowers, that freshman tight end phenom who was just making insane plays and breaking tackles, Mm -hmm. they don't have many more trustworthy targets to just pick apart people's secondaries. They can attack the middle of the field with tight ends, and they can hit the occasional deep ball with speed, but they don't have that guy that can just pick you apart first down for first down and get into the red zone and just get points after points. Mm -hmm. Josh Gaddis and that offense for Michigan has shown, we're going to start with the run game, but we can hit you in different ways. And the offense has slowly gotten better each game 
and progressed as the season has gone on. Like you said, we're not predicting it right now, but I think Georgia's in for a fight. Yeah. Because this, yeah, this Michigan team is mentally tough, and they're not going anywhere. Yeah, we'll get we'll get some more previews of bowl games as we get closer. Obviously, it's at the end of December, so we got plenty of time to look over the bowls and uh, kind of dig a little deeper, I guess. But yeah, my my initial instinct is that Michigan has the better offense, but in the weird case, I do think Georgia might have the slight the slightest of edge on defense. Um, so it could be kind of a, a push pull type game to see what happens. Yeah, honestly, these are these teams are more similar than they would like to admit. Honestly, yeah, I, I agree. they are so similar, it's kind of scary. Mm-hmm. But like like you said, there are slight differences on on both sides. Yeah, where one side has an advantage and the other side has one in another aspect. Mm-hmm. And with many of these teams, we always uh, think about Heisman candidates. And the last few weeks has been, whoever doesn't lose, they'll have the Heisman candidate. And that's kind of been the case, because we saw Kenneth Walker for the longest time up there. Matt Corral was up there for a while. And then C.J. Stroud was kind of the guy. And then they lost to Michigan. He's still there, but he's faded, I think, for a lot of people. And now with Alabama upsetting Georgia... Bryce Young is now at the top of the list. And where it was like almost last week where Aiden Hutchinson was the top of the list. And it's just like people just kind of keep uh, jumping ahead of each other. So our Heisman candidates are as fouls, follows. Bryce Young, quarterback, Alabama. Aiden Hutchinson, defensive end, Michigan. C.J. Stroud, quarterback, Ohio State. And of course, Malik's dog of the year, Kenny Pick it. My guy. Quarterback. The one Pitt. and only. Wow. What a season for Kenny Pickett. Can we just take a moment and see a pit quarterback up with Ohio State, Michigan, and Alabama? Listen, listen bra- <laughs> bravo. I I had reason to doubt him for the past few years because this was nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. But what he did this season, he he completely changed everything I thought about him. Yeah. He deserves all the praise he gets. We will get to the controversy. Yes. I personally believe Kenny Pickett deserves to be there. Yeah. Because even though, yeah, Clemson is down, Miami is down, it's not the vicious ACC that people wish it was, he got Pittsburgh to the ACC championship. They won the conference. Yes. And he had an incredible season. And now they are in the Peach Bowl playing Michigan State. And talk about no expectations. Pitt did not have expectations. They lost to Western in week three. <laughs> yeah. They had no <laughs> They lost to Western Michigan. Yeah. And that's not a slide on Western Michigan. They're in a bowl game too. Right. But you're Pitt. You're an ACC team. You mm-hmm. have some history. Yeah. And, yeah, they just had an outstanding season. Um, so hats off to them. As we said, Bryce Young right now. Probably the favorite, most likely to win it. CJ Stroud deserves to be there, but he did kind of fade away towards the end. Okay. Well, this is where, <laughs> okay, but this is good because this is where controversy starts. Exactly. Because the other person that many people are unsure about, after last week, Aiden Hutchinson being, you know, big guy on campus, people kind of like him being the favorite. And that's kind of because of, Michigan beating Ohio State. Everybody's kind of like in that honeymoon phase. And they're like, oh, Aiden Hutchinson, definite Heisman. But you just talked about it earlier. Will Anderson for Alabama probably deserves to be there. His numbers are better than Aiden Hutchinson. There's no probably. He deserves to be there. Yes. But I think we're having the wrong conversation. Okay. I think Aiden Hutchinson does deserve to be there too. Okay. There should be two defensive ends in this Heisman ceremony. Maybe. That that's the hardest part, especially in a year like this year where like people there was no standout for the entire season necessarily. Until um, the until the last few weeks where people started really to show out in big games. Yeah, I, I guess so, but, but 
I'm, I'm surprised you haven't even brought up the Kenneth Walker. Oh, I was thing going. Yet, which, I was going. That's yeah. where I was going. We'll get to the okay. Because yeah. now that Kenneth Walker has left the Heisman standings because of the Ohio State game, people are very upset, and, and I, I get it, because his numbers rival Derrick Henry, he had a Mark season. Ingram, and I get that you know the big game happened and he didn't perform. But the hard part for me personally is that it wasn't entirely his fault in that game. And now you can argue both sides for that, that, you know, okay, that's just unfortunate. He can go get him next year. But at the same time, like what he did in the, in his games was incredible. But at the same time, you only can go to four candidates. So when your team loses, what, two games or whatever, it it starts to get hard when all these other guys, their teams have not lost. So there's been a lot of talk, of course, around here because Michigan and Michigan State, people thinking Kenneth Walker deserves it over Aiden Hutchinson. I don't know how you, you... I don't know how you argue because I can see both sides to be fair, because if you just go by numbers and things like that, I don't, I don't know, but because they're on a big team, similar to like how you see a lot of MVP votes go, sometimes the numbers aren't always the best, but because their team wins, that matters for people. So it depends on, you know, who you're asking. And the Heisman is also a weird thing because there are like a thousand people that get to vote yeah. on the Heisman thing. And it's not always a numbers thing. Sometimes it is a popularity contest. Different people have different reasons. And, and that is upsetting for a lot of people. And I can understand that. But again, there's only four slots. I don't know. I don't want to be that person to have to pick those four slots. That's all I'll say. So there are so many angles to attack this at. I'm only going to go... T- First of all, because of time, I'm only going to go through a few. But the Kenneth Walker thing, I think he's the Doak Walker Award winner for best running back in the country. Mm-hmm. He's a first-team All-American. And if there were five slots, <laughs> he would deserve to be in the Heisman conversation. Mm-hmm. But there are a few factors of why I think he should he, – could make the cut of four. Mm-hmm. First of all, this isn't his fault. This is the recency bias that comes with the Heisman ceremony. And unless you put up insane numbers like Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. where he only had a few big games like in the beginning, in the middle of the season, but there were no other in- insane standouts and his numbers were so great that he won. He had his Heisman moment too early. Mm. Michigan is 7-0. and Michigan State is 7-0. and You put up five touchdowns and you dominate. Mm-hmm. And after that point, there was no higher mark than that. Yeah. Unless he could have finished out the game against Ohio State. Just because- even, even then, it wouldn't have affected anything because of how just how bad it went so I think, fast. I think if his numbers were the same as his season averages at Ohio State, I think he made it the top four. There's a possibility. Even, the, even with the loss. Yeah. The first thing, he had his Heisman moment too early. Mm-hmm. Then there's, you have a good game against Purdue, but you get upset. The embarrassment against Ohio State. And then you have another really good game against Penn State, but nothing excellent. So when the Heisman has a running back, you have to finish out the season higher than anybody else. Mm-hmm. Which is, even though you brought up the numbers with Derrick Henry, and Mark Ingram, they finished the they finished the season in contention for conference championships and national titles, and they balled out when everybody was watching mm-hmm. at the most important times. Yeah, that's what gets you over the top as a running back. Unfortunately, his was early against Michigan. It right. was an incredible performance, but the team went down after that. They didn't. They finished strong, but he didn't finish on a dominant note. Right. And then you bring in the factor of Kenny Pickett gets pit to the conference championship, wins the conference championship, 
has the highlight fake slide in the conference championship, yeah. which was an incredible play. A lot of people were negative on that and thought it was shouldn't be legal, but it was just an incredible play in the moment. Right, puts up great numbers, has almost five thousand yards passing over forty touchdowns, breaks Dan Marino's t- like passing touchdown record. You got to put him in New York, right, for doing that with Pitt and winning the ACC. Mm-hmm. Will Anderson has had one of the most dominant defensive player seasons ever. Right. I think he broke the record for tackles for a loss. He has a, like a second and a half more than Aiden Hutchinson. Mm-hmm. He has ni- like 94, 95 tackles total. He is an absolute monster that deserves to be in New York. Right. And I think he should have gotten in over C.J. Stroud, who was consistently high level and really good all throughout the season. Had a few elite moments, but no Heisman moments. Mm-hmm. They smacked Michigan State. Good. They were pretty average against Penn State at home. And he couldn't get it done against Michigan. Even though he still put up a, a bunch of yards. Mm-hmm. He couldn't get them over the top against Michigan. Yeah, No conference championship. Only a few noteworthy, extremely, extremely high-level games to get people's attention. Right. Still high-level numbers. Still one of the best quarterbacks in the country, mm-hmm. but not the dominance of Will Anderson. Yeah. It should have been Will Anderson, Bryce Young, Kenny Pickett, Aiden Hutchinson. Right. The debate between Aiden and Will Anderson, I don't think that's the right debate. Because I think Will Anderson and Aiden Hutchinson are both the elite of the elite. Mm. And they both have years that deserve to be noted on the highest level. I'll just play devil's advocate, advocate here. Does everything I said make sense for the most part? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Yes. Um, the recency bias is a huge part of it, but yeah. And and I will just be the devil's advocate here. And I'll talk about why Aiden Hutchinson, Hutchinson, Aiden Hutchinson, Hutchinson. shouldn't <laughs> yes. be there. Um, and it, it's not even that I don't think he deserves to be there, but I'm just going to point it out. I get that there's a positional difference between Hutchinson and Will Anderson. Well, only slightly because right, but they, they they play the same position technically, right? But, but they play it different ways. Yes. So, but and so I agree. Like, there's a lot of people have come out and said, well, that affects like their numbers a lot, and it does to a certain extent. Um, and it, and again, just going off of numbers, Will Anderson's numbers are better than Hutchinson's. Yeah. And I guess it's a it's a problem with the Heisman itself. Absolutely, is that. For a defensive player to win it or be a finalist, they have to be basically a generational talent. Yeah. And when I think of Aiden Hutchinson, I think of him as really, really good. Top prospect in his class. But when I I looked up other defensive Heisman finalists. And I'm a Sue. Sue. Uh, Warren, Manti Teo. Manti Teo. Warren Sapp. Chase Young, which now Chase Young hasn't necessarily worked out yet. And then you think of the only winner ever, Charles Woodson, one of the greatest players, period. He had to do it in all three phases to win. Yes. And, yeah, and, and, but and he was he, a corner. And he did it not only once he got out of college, but in the NFL, and he's just otherworldly. So he's yeah. the, he's the exception there. But when I think about those guys, like even Jabril Peppers, back in, what did they say? Yeah, in 2016, he finished fifth in the voting. So he got just outside of it. I feel like Aiden Hutchinson is a Jabril Peppers. And that's just my feeling. What, do, what, is, what does that mean exactly? Because there's a huge difference between those two. Well, yeah, but like the way there, that they played. The way that they played. Jabril like, Peppers was criticized for his entire career. For not putting up the numbers that match his skill. Yeah. Aiden is is put has put up the numbers that match what his skill level is. Yeah. I, I just don't think like I I don't know. And again, I, I think The Ohio it, State game is the biggest part of it. Yeah. It's and, the biggest part. And I think honestly, I don't think this is a good uh reason, but it's funny how all the Michigan State fans are posting when Aiden Hutchinson missed a tackle on Kenneth Walker. <laughs> it's pretty clever. Do I agree with it? I don't know. Yeah. I don't really know. <laughs> but, Everybody's missed a tackle. But, like, that's what I say is uh, that's the hardest part about the Heisman is, like, you have to narrow it down to four players, and especially if it's a defensive player, 
it is so much harder for them to make it. And so for there to be two defensive players, I just feel like it makes the argument harder. And if I was to choose one defensive player, I think it would be Anderson. But bringing up bringing up the what you what you said and the what we both know, this is a year where there were there were standout players, but there was not that one or two guys throughout the season where we were like, those are the guys. It took till this last season, this past uh, ch- conference championship season, mm-hmm. I mean weekend, for us to be like, okay, Bryce Young's the winner. Right. It took just until the like two weeks before the Heisman. It's yeah. usually wrapped up by like the last two weeks because mm-hmm. there's a guy that's just like, okay, he's the one. Right. But it's taken this long. Mm-hmm. This is the year where there should have been two defensive players because of that type of thing to me. Yeah. If there are two players that are that elite, that's a good argument. And Will Anderson has numbers are even that more impressive mm-hmm. than Aiden Hutchinson. I think this should have been the year. Yeah. You also think like Thibodeau from Oregon was I mean, he's like the pre, he was like the preseason favorite in early season. And obviously with Oregon stumbling, there was no way he was gonna win. And, it. and he he played like half the season too. Right. Um, so it's just crazy how much it's changed this year, I think, in general. Um, but yeah, it, again, you can go on and on about who could have been in it, who should have been in it, who shouldn't have. Yeah, this is an award that a lot of people say doesn't matter. Right. At the end of the day, so. Yeah. And yeah. to some degree, I kind of agree with them. I, I only do a little because I love college football so much. Yeah. And the Heisman is such a staple of college football. that you Right. Know. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. But like, I just. I just already start to think about, like last year, Devontae Smith winning the Heisman. He has been probably the worst rookie wide receiver. He's playing he's, in that NFL class. Not in the whole class, but, you know, the top guys. If you look at what he's been doing the past, he started slow, but he's getting into He's together. done okay, and it's part of the Eagles system that he's yeah, in. Yeah, they're, they're a mess right now. But still, that's, that's just something to point out, I guess. Um, one other thing that I wanted to bring up about Kenny Pickett there's a lot of talk that he might not play in this Peach Bowl because he's going to be focusing on the NFL at this point. Do you think he's right or wrong to do that? To sit out, if he does? This, this goes into an even bigger argument because this goes back to Christian McCaffrey sitting out his bowl game mm-hmm. the year he was going to be a top 10 pick and everybody lost their minds over that. I personally... I see both sides. If he sat out, I wouldn't be angry. But come on, like the matchup between Kenny Pickett and the guy that got snubbed for the Heisman, like Mm -hmm. Pitt is rarely ever in these types of situations. Right. Leaving at this point would would really suck. Yeah. And seeing the type of dude Kenny Pickett is and how much he's loves his team and loves Pitt, it would be weird to see him just jump out now. Yeah. And kind of switch up mentality. Right. And I would also say, normally I'm more on the player side. Like, okay, it's it's a bowl game. And bowl games, to me, don't fully matter most of the time. Unless you're in the college football playoff. It, it, it depends on the situation. Right. Like, like you, schools that that rarely ever do it. Yes. Yeah, get into the New Year's, New Year's Six when you rarely don't. Like, right. Yeah, those types of things. But in this scenario, I think it does matter because... Right now, he could be the number one quarterback taken in this draft class. And you have the opportunity to play a Big Ten school in Michigan State that played better than they expected. So now that win is way more valuable. Exactly. In a Big Ten that was very difficult. So to take, to have the chance to take out that team in a bowl game, in a big, big bowl game, I feel like you should take it because your draft stock could only get better. And if you lose, I don't think it can really hamper your draft stock as much. I think there's more positives to it than negatives. Yeah, the, the Unless more, you get hurt, of course. The that more is, you've said it, the more I'm on your side. I would, I would be kind of – I would look at him sideways. Right. If he, if he made the decision to step out. He decided to come back to Pitt for, for one more year for a reason. Mm-hmm. This type of season, I assume he felt like these improvements, these types of things were coming all together. Yeah. You don't stick around for mediocrity for three years at Pitt Mm -hmm. and then stay for one more year. Right. And then do all of this, build this legacy, 
break Dan Marino's record, get to this big bowl game, putting Pitt back on the map. Yeah, This is what he stayed for. He stayed to do all of this. You don't do all of that and then at the last minute dip when the best thing is coming. Right. Yeah. You, winning a conference championship is, is at the top of the list pretty much. Mm-hmm. But winning this bowl game shows people on the biggest – everybody's going to be watching this game. Barely anybody has been watching Pitt. A lot of people are probably confused that Pitt has this record right. and won the ACC. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, de- denying the fans, the university – Everybody you stayed for, denying them the chance for the world to see Pitt on this stage and their Heisman contending quarterback, that that would be strange Yeah, at the last minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's basically all we have for college football. I know it was a lot. Yeah. But there's a lot to talk about. Like I said, in the next coming weeks, we'll probably look at a couple bowl games here and there. Every Michigan school made a bowl game this year, so... It's a hell of an accomplishment. Yes. And uh, I think the funniest thing of all, and I, I said this to my brother, obviously, is that CMU made the Barstool Sports Bowl. That seems just so fitting for them. Also, they have the leading rusher in the country, if you didn't yes, know. Yes, they do. Lou I, Nichols out of yeah. Cast Tech. Yeah. In Monster Year. Yeah. Watch if I was him, that. I would transfer very soon. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he stays there, good for Central. But that yeah. kid is a beast. Yeah. He's, he's kind of like um, Kareem Hunt was at Toledo. Mm-hmm. He's, he just – looks better than all Mac competition. Right. Uh, so now I wanted to move on to one quick NBA topic before we get into NFL picks and things. Because ESPN brought it up recently and it got me thinking and it's a really interesting topic to me personally. Where do you put Steph Curry on the greatest of all time? Especially thinking that, I mean, I would think right now he's on track for the MVP. They could make another finals appearance this year. Now, this is all speculative. But if Steph Curry keeps up what he's doing right now, I think he's the MVP of the league. That puts him at three MVPs, potentially another championship run. First take debated is Steph Curry more like Michael Jordan than LeBron James? And that's mostly play style. But I an, an impact of the game. Right. But but I've almost been starting to think like where does Steph Curry line up in the top 10 of all time? Because he just for me, he keeps climbing that list. Honestly, if you're talking players of this generation, it goes LeBron, KD and Steph is probably 3. Mm-hmm. I I don't think you have to put much thought into, into it honestly. No. LeBron, some people say he's the GOAT. I have him number two behind Jordan. Right. KD, second greatest small forward of all time. Mm-hmm. Top 10. And who do you put third of this generation besides Steph? Yeah. Look what he's three championships, the unanimous MVP. He's completely changed the game. Mm-hmm. He's the greatest shooter of all time. Right. Uh, he's broken every three point record. I, it just, I feel like it, as weird as it sounds, because he is one of the most popular players around, he flies under the radar radar of greatest of all time, I think. And I don't know if it's because like people always bash the Warriors for being a super team. People or, still or whatever, hate the Warriors. But, people, people still try their hardest yeah. to hate on Steph. And I can only ever see that when they bring in the Kevin Durant situation in. Because before that, it was all built. The Warriors built that from the ground up. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. It, uh, to me, Steph Curry's in the top 10 of all time. If he's not in the top 10, he's between 10 and 15 to me. Yeah. And, uh, of course, if, if you're going by numbers alone, that's where you put, like, you would put, like, Kevin Durant and stuff above him. But as, like, Success. Overall success and impact. Yeah. There aren't many players in, in, in NBA history. Right. Outside of Michael Jordan, like Julius Irving. Kareem. The Bill Russells, the Kareems. Yeah. Of, of course, LeBron is impactful, but what right. Steph has done for to basketball. Yeah. yeah. Like, I start to think, because we talk in generations a lot. 60s. Wilt, Russell. 70s. You get to Kareem. Yeah. 80s. You throw Oscar Robertson is in there with the right. 60s and 70s. Yes. Yeah. 
uh, Magic, Bird, Isaiah, 90s, Jordan, 2000s. A, yeah. You got like Shaq and Kobe. And then there's like LeBron and then Steph. I think, I don't know. I just, I think Steph could, especially if he wins maybe a couple more times. If he wins one more. Yeah. It's a lot of dudes that got to get bounced out of that top 10. Right. Because four championships from that guy. Mm -hmm. Especially if he wins it now because it's back to being Steph, Clay, and Draymond. Back to, you know, how they were originally. Clay isn't even back yet. Yeah. And they're one of the best defensive teams in the league right now. Now, that's not Steph. That's not really his yeah. his thing. But he's still somewhat committed to his defense. Uh, he's kind of a, a sneaky defender. Um, he gets a lot of steals and things. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, I felt like I needed to give Steph some credit. Because it's. I think it's interesting. And... W- We'll have to obviously see how his career ends, but there's a lot of possibility for him to keep climbing that list. Listen, man, we we live in a very weird era of basketball fandom where half of the NBA fan base today are trolls <laughs> and they don't really know basketball, mm-hmm. but they will debate and argue and scream up and down at you about just nonsense. Mm-hmm. And... There are there are certain fan bases of certain players, and I'm not afraid to name names. Lakers, outside outside of Lakers, LeBron fans specifically, the LeBron fans that were Cleveland fans and became Miami fans and are now diehard Lakers fans. Mm-hmm. Them, Russell Westbrook fans, who they're some of the main ones who are the charge of they rip apart Steph every time Steph has a bad game which is few and far between. Mm-hmm. He just had one of his worst games of his career against Phoenix a few, I mean, last week. Yep. They're the ones that go out and say, oh, why don't you, why don't you bring up Steph's bad games, huh? Why don't you bring up his bad games? Mm. Russ has bad games. Everybody rips him apart. That's because Russ, <laughs> bad games are a part of what he is. Yeah. It is literally a part of Russ's career mm-hmm. to have horrible stretches and all-time great stretches. Yeah. Steph is usually consistently what, what is, what is, what is this? What kind of greatness is this? Mm-hmm. That's the level that Steph is at. Right. And I think just the the different type of NBA fan, an NBA watcher we have today, dudes that care more about specific players than teams, dudes that don't really care about the level of competition and the grit. They just want high scoring and dunks and fun mm-hmm. and everybody to be friends. It's a so you just got me yeah. in a whole different place. I but I think that plays a big part yeah. in the disrespect of Stephen Curry. Right. It really does. And it, it's strange because all the all-time greats, people that know basketball, know for a fact it's unquestioned, his greatness. Mm-hmm. But people just like to debate it right? because their guys aren't as great as him or they haven't won as much as him. Yeah. It's like it frustrates them. There are people that still say it, the difficult shots he hits are all luck. Mm-hmm. Like it, can you can you can you believe that yeah. he has consistently hit insane shots in his entire career, mm-hmm. and there are people that with a straight face will be like, "Who cares? It's it's lucky. Yeah, <laughs> it's just lucky." Yeah, he there was, was a season where he shot like sixty percent from half court. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's 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 nuts. Anyway, I, I just wanted to talk about that for a minute. I felt like I needed to say it. Um, we'll talk more NBA stuff as it goes on, but there hasn't been a whole lot moving in the NBA. Yeah, Warriors and Suns have just set themselves apart. Yeah, they've just run away with it. Uh, the East is still a tight, like, 12-team race. Yeah, kind of going all over the place. But then in the NBA, they've had a weird surge of COVID. Yeah. Um, so things are all over the place. They're kind of a mess, but not much has changed overall. So I think Chicago has been one of the, like, the one consistent teams in the East. Yeah. Even though DeMar- DeRozan is getting caught up in the protocols now, too, but Lonzo had 20, Zach had 30, Vucevic is back, and they're still winning. Yeah. There uh, was one game where Vooch had 30, uh, DeRozan had 30, and Levine had 30, which was listen, nuts. The, the, their chemistry is the most shocking part, mm-hmm. how willing they are to play with each other and how easy it looks. Yeah. It's really impressive. Billy Donovan, if people thought he was a bad coach, he's doing an outstanding job. Right. Also, Milwaukee is getting healthy. They signed DeMarcus Cousins, which I'm sure a lot of people do not know. 
yeah. has even happened. Brooke Lopez is having I don't I don't know if it's neck problems or back problems. I can't remember which one. I think it's back problems. And no but they don't know how long he might be out. So they made a low key pretty great signing. Yeah. Picking up Boogie when nobody was paying attention. Um speaking of injuries, the last couple things uh to note for uh injuries and then we'll get into picks for the NFL. CJ McCollum got a collapsed lung and he is out indefinitely. The Blazers are going through some so, real problems right now. Collapsed lungs are a scary thing, and so people could be out. He could be out for the season. It could affect his career. Um, and then Michael Porter Jr. is going undergoing back surgery, which is terrifying because that's what he dealt yeah. with in college. And so he will be out the remainder Just of the season. Just got that fresh, huge contract. Yeah, after having an insane season last year people were expecting even more this year had, had a get... honestly horrible start to the season yeah before the injury started wasn't playing well um and yeah now he's got to get a whole back surgery it's crazy and unfortunate for him hate to see it um yeah let's get into picks so malik you got 11 picks right last week <laughs> And I got seven. Yeah. So on all the ones that I tried to go risky on and were somewhat risky, you no, I failed. If you remember, I told you to go risky. I told you to go for it. And you said I can't play it that that risky. I told you to go for it. I, I felt like I took enough risks. I mean, I took the you, Jets for You didn't go all the way. Maybe. <laughs> you, you didn't buy in. But the good thing is, this week especially, there are a lot of – a lot of divisional matchups, a lot of playoff implicated matchups, a lot of games that I think could go either way. So here we go. Pittsburgh at Minnesota Thursday night. Pittsburgh somehow beat Baltimore. Baltimore made, I think, a bad decision in going for two to try to just win the game outright. I think they would have won in overtime. Uh, Pittsburgh is so weird. In Minnesota, after losing to the Lions on the last second play, Minnesota has become a better version of the Lions where they will lose in the last seconds of the game somehow. They win games they shouldn't, and they lose games they shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Dalvin Cook's not in this one. Alexander Madison fits in nicely, though. Pittsburgh, however, man, is this like a risk that I need to take? Gosh. I'm taking Pittsburgh. Listen. This this is these are the types of games Kirk Cousins comes out and balls. I know, and they win convincingly. Justin Jefferson just tore up the line. I cannot trust the Steelers week to week. I go, I'm going Vikings. Okay. Can't trust them. Detroit at Denver. Lions coming off their first win of the season. Denver did not look good at all last week, except for Javante Williams. Tore That's it up. The, that was one of the maybe the only bright spot. And Jerry Judy was back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but they are playing Kansas City. If they give Drew Locke a chance, do the Lions win? I'm picking the Lions. Momentum. I like the confidence. Momentum. Even though Denver has two really good running backs, and that's the Lions' downfall. Listen, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick the Broncos. I'm not picking the Lions. Thank you. <laughs> the Lions winning back-to-back weeks I don't think is likely. They they got some horseshoe luck. They They got some... The monkey off the back, they, whatever you want to call they it. They finally went to a Monroe St. Brown consistently. Did a dink and dunk kind of offense. I kind of like it. Did it without DeAndre Swift. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going Broncos, man. Who, whether they start Drew Locke or Teddy. Baltimore at Cleveland. I'm taking Baltimore. They are Cleveland's kryptonite. The Ravens are really 8-4. and four. Yeah. They should be 9-3. and three. Mark Jackson should probably be MVP if they make the playoffs. He is, it, it is insane that they are eight and four. He has been a little inconsistent though. He has. This is, he's doing too much, but, but he's he, also he feels like games. he has to do too much for a reason. Yeah. And their defense is dismantled. No Marlon Humphrey, no Marcus Peters for the season. Yeah. Their defense is in shambles. That's the one take? thing I'm nervous about. The Ravens. Oh, I'll go with the Browns then. I went with the Ravens because they just always seem to play better against the Browns. Jacksonville at Tennessee. Yikes. Tennessee might get Julio Jones back for this game. Jacksonville looks like a nightmare. They might not be. They, they, I don't know. 
I don't even know. Like James Robinson is their best player, and he's been banged up, and then he all of a sudden got sat last week because he fumbled or something, or nobody knows. Urban Meyer is blaming his other coaches about issues. It's with the Urban team. Meyer, man. What do you expect? I'm taking Tennessee. What do you expect? <laughs> this is a risk I cannot take. I'm taking Tennessee too, but. Just looking at Tennessee, is this the first year where I think the Buccaneers might be the only team I don't – I feel uneasy about almost every team except Tampa Bay. I feel uneasy about Tampa Bay. I feel like they – I feel like once they get to the playoffs, I won't be worried about them. Yeah, maybe. They could They could be like that. But there's a lot of games where like – like last week against Atlanta. They dismantled Atlanta. But they actually gave up a lot more points to Atlanta they, than I thought they, they should They did that during the regular season last year, too, though. Yeah. They'd have games where they look great and games where it'd be like, uh, I don't know about this. Yeah. So, I mean, again, it's just it's just a little thing. It's a really up-in-the-air season. Yeah. It, it seems like that would be good, but I don't know why. It's, I haven't been as interested in this season, mm-hmm. really. Oakland at Kansas City. KC got a very weird win yep. against the Broncos. They're still not Sunday playing night. all that great. Not very good at all. Their defense is playing good, though. Pat Mahomes and Tyreek Hill's chemistry looks kind of uh, gone <laughs> at the moment. Yeah. And I, I I don't know what changes it. I mean, the last time they played Oakland, they lit it up. Clyde Edward Tiller looked all right yeah. his first game back. They look good in but spots, but they're just not. These are the types of games where the Raiders light up. They're not clicking. <laughs> these are these types of games. Yeah. I'm going to pick the Raiders. Okay, good, because I I think, can't trust the Chiefs right now. I think Kansas City is going to look at the last time that they played the Raiders and just say, hey, we blew them up last time. Let's just do it again. Maybe the Raiders make an adjustment. but Don't sleep on those Vegas Raiders. They've been weird, too, this season. New Orleans at the Jets. New Please. Orleans is just isn't fun to watch anymore. <laughs> they're just not. But they're better than the Jets. Yes. I'm taking New Orleans. I'm taking the Jets. Oh, my God. <laughs> I there, It's just something that does not I, – I don't like – I watch them, and I'm just like, ugh. Yeah. I, I don't like this. Yeah. I get it. The Jets have, are, like, building confidence. Yeah. And Zach Wilson is playing better. They're actually more fun to watch. They hung with the Eagles for a while. Yeah. Um, and then they – We'll get to Minshew Mania. He's, he's back. Dallas at Washington all of a sudden has become a very interesting division. Where, why, is, why are they all of a sudden playing like good football? Their defense is just now starting to figure it out. Antonio Gibson is looking healthy. Heineke is making just, he's doing just enough. Yes. Just and enough. Dallas is going the other way. They're not looking as they good look, lately. Yeah, they look. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott's been banged up. Dak has actually just looked off. You never know what receiver is going to be in the lineup. Yeah. Now, they should be good to go. Mari Cooper back, C.D. Lamb. They did look good against the Saints, though. It yeah. was a nice get-back game. But, I don't know. This one's hard for me. Notice I haven't asked to pick first yet. I know. <laughs> yeah. Can I pick first? I'm picking Washington. I said, can I pick first? And you picked... This might be a change. You might win this week. You're aggressive. I like this. You are very aggressive. Who, who'd you pick? Washington. You pick Washington? Yep. They're going to flip uh, the division on its on its head. I'm picking Washington, too. Dang. Okay, good. Two can play this game, sir. Atlanta. I like at, the aggression, though. Atlanta at Carolina. This is a weird game. Yep. Two bottom-of-the-barrel teams. Will Cam Newton be his first start or his last start? He was so... Terrible. Mm-hmm. He was so terrible. Yeah. I guess was it was the Chargers, right? Uh, I believe so. Oh. Yeah. He couldn't make a pass. The Panthers just fired Joe Brady. Yep. Now Matt Rule says he wants to run the ball a lot more, so that's Chuba Hubbard now, I guess. Uh, maybe Cam Newton. Maybe they try to run the Eagles' offense. May I please pick first, yes. sir? Go ahead. I'm going with those what used to be the Dirty Birds. <laughs> they're a, they're pretty uh, clean now. Mm-hmm. But I'm st- I'm still gonna go with the birds, okay? Because the the Panthers are just a mess right now. And then that means I have to go with the Panthers because both teams are weird. Atlanta has looked good at times, but they've also looked very bad at times. Seattle at Houston. Seattle. <laughs> I like how sure you sound about that one. 
Houston is talking about going back to Davis Mills. So Davis Mills had a, 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 like five or six really good throws this season, Joey. <laughs> That's some good film to build off of oh, outside of the trash. Um, yeah, Seattle. Okay. I still have no confidence in them, but that win against San Francisco was something. Yeah. It was something. Yeah. Giants at the Chargers. This is a, also a weird one. Chargers that, should be better, but they also have at times fallen apart. But they've looked good the last couple games. So, I don't know. And then the Giants, uh, oof. I mean, they might be starting Jake Fromm this week. So, I guess off of that, I'll have yeah. to go with the Chargers. You know what? Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm not going with Fromm. I can't do it. I I really he was in that QB one show <laughs> maybe he's in high mis- school. I really used to like Jake maybe Fromm. he's the missing link. Jake from State from maybe he'll uh, yeah. throw it to Kenny Galladay. His reputation has just fallen off ever since Georgia. Forty yeah. ers at the Bengals. Can I pick first? Go ahead. Bengals get back game. Forty ers defense is good. It's Great not as at good. times. Not as good as it has been in the past. Yes. And Cincinnati likes to run the wall. San Francisco likes to run the wall. I'm going to go with San Francisco, hoping that Debo Samuel is back. Buffalo at Tampa Bay. Buffalo is going to be so satisfied to be in good weather. Yeah. Outside of the weather, Josh Allen didn't look very on point Mm -hmm. with his throws. But when you have uh, 40 to 50 mile per hour uh, gusts, I mean, how, how easy is it to be on target? This I, I'm nervous that this is one of those ones that everybody's like, oh my gosh, Buffalo and Tampa Bay. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be so much fun to watch. It's going to be a snooze fest. I think I'm going to go with Buffalo with the upset. I think I have to take this risk. Their running game is non-existent. Their defense, they lost Tredavious White. But I'm hoping that Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs can do the unthinkable and beat the Buccaneers. Give me 12. Enough said. Chicago at Green Bay. Justin Fields coming back to start, and he's got to go to Lambeau Field. Just just pick Green Bay. (laughs) Good, because I'm going to. Just, Just, yeah. We don't need to discuss that. Get Nagy out of there. Um, I think it's good to get Justin Fields back, though, so Chicago can see uh, what he looks like. After Green Bay, they do have a favorable schedule, so they they can at least get their young guys some confidence. They they got a little bit of a core with Fields, Mooney, Montgomery, but they're a lost cause. The Rams and the Cardinals for Monday night. This should be a good one, and I'm excited for it. Yeah. Matt Stafford <clears throat> got back on track against a terrible team. Yep. Odell Beckham, Odell Beckham Jr. looked happy. It, for now. I mean, he got a touchdown, but he only had two catches. Yeah. Um, the Rams are still looking a little off. I don't know if they're going to get Daryl Henderson back in this game. I think Kyler back helped the Cardinals a ton. Yeah. And the Cardinals, they're they've really just, tending to. They've just been running over everybody. Um, so I guess I got to take the Rams as my risky pick. And that means I'm taking the Cardinals. Fair enough. Yes. Sweet. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different picks. That's got to be an all-time This is a make or break. It is. This is the make or break. And this will be the week that I get five right and you get four right or something like that, you know? like Or I get one more right than you do or something what like that. What if I go nine and oh? Actually, we, we have. Well, we have a couple yeah, that yeah, we, we have, have the same the picks. Same. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we have nine different picks. Undefeated besides those. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's going to be crazy. Another week of picks. Uh, next week we'll probably get back into NBA topics and things like that. Like I said, we'll take a little bit of a college football hiatus, at least for maybe a week, maybe two. And then we'll talk about some college basketball, give you some updates on all the teams and yeah, we'll see if I can make the comeback in picks next week. This has been views from the sidelines. We will see you guys next time. Shouts out to Michigan basketball. Two nice to get right games. San Diego State beat them at home. Destroyed Nebraska on the road. Getting on the right track. 
Go Blue.